Cardinal Denny. Playhouse 90. Brought to you by Royal Portable Typewriters, products of the Royal McBee Corporation, the world's largest manufacturer of typewriters. Marlboro cigarettes. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter. Flavor. Flip top box. And by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs. The famous Singer and Red S trademarks. And by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs, the famous singer and Red S trademarks. <laughs> On Playhouse 90, to introduce tonight's show, Hedda Hopper. This is a story about Hollywood. It begins here in this theater, where a preview is now ending. is coming up. Soon, some of them will write their opinions about the picture on these cards. They will put the cards in the ballot boxes. On what is written on them, a very great deal depends. The Last Tycoon. Directed by John Frankenheimer. Produced by Martin Manulis. Although I've never been on the screen, I was brought up in pictures. Rudolph Valentino came to my fifth birthday party, or so I've been told. I put this down only to indicate that even before I reached the age of reason, I was in a position to watch the wheels go round. I'm Cecilia Brady. Maybe I used to get excited at previews, but not anymore. I guess I got a little blasé when my father was head of the studio. Later on, they made him assistant head, which is not quite the same as firing him, because he still had an office and a paycheck. But this preview was different. This was the big one, the picture that was going to get the studio out of the hole. I had what people in the industry call somebody to root for in this one. I don't mean just my father. The man talking to Monroe Starr, Starr was the head of production at the studio, was Wiley White. He wrote the script. And he only stayed sober enough to write it because of me. Mm. Mm. Peppermint? Oh, it's all right. Preview nights, one drink. How'd it go? Three laughs. It's not a comedy. How'd it sink twice? And the film broke. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous, Monroe. Just what about that? Oh, they tore the place Wonderful down, picture. applauding. I'm doing every minute. Monroe, you know my daughter. A great picture. She's home for the summer from Bennington. Fine picture, Mr. Stanton. You're uh, Cecilia. I had no idea you were such, such a... Such a grown-up lady? How time flies. Why, I haven't seen you since you were such I a... was trying for a fresher line. It's a habit I get associating with writers. Such riffraff. Follow <laughs> the picture, Monroe. Real living doll. Oh, Craig. Get the cards, will you, Wiley? You want to come along? Oh, come on. Great. 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 Add them up, will you, Wiley? Not that it matters. We're in trouble, Pat. Oh, I'm not satisfied with it, Monroe. It needs a little work. Some of the cuts are sloppy. A lot of work. So... Where's Kellogg? I thought directors were supposed to care enough to come to previews. Well, he got six weeks off after shooting to recuperate psychologically. It's in his contract. Where is he? Oh, I don't know. He owns some island. I want him in my office tomorrow. Well, how can I... Tomorrow. Well, all right, all right, but why? When I have a real sick picture, I like to see the director. It's an old custom of mine. They loved it, Monroe. Listen to this. A sensitive and persuasive script. Mm, your sister's handwriting's improving. It happens to be my secretary. <coughs> they loved it. It played like a charm, Monroe. It's a slice of life. 
Well, that's bad realism. Bad. 30 years in the industry and you haven't learned fact number one. Pictures are made for audiences. Well, they want to see people like themselves. No, they don't. If they did, they could look at the folks next door just by looking through the window. Are they going to pay money to hire a sitter, park a car, buy a ticket to see the same kind of people? Because that's what this picture asks them to do. You saw the script. Yes, it was a good script. So whose fault is it if we got away from your idea of what the script Not should be? Not my idea of the script, just the script. Your arty friend Kellogg couldn't have cleaned every bit of drama out of it any better if he'd used a vacuum cleaner. And it was my fault. I took a vacation. I thought the script was foolproof. I was wrong. No script is foolproof. Not if you have the right fool. Oh, now, wait a minute. One I thing we had going for us in this story was the girl, Barbara Walters. In Wiley's script, she wants Johnny Withered. At all moments when she is in our sight, she wants him. When she walks down the street, she walks to him. When she eats, it is to give her strength to have him. Is that clear, Pat? Yes, yes, that's Because that's the element that got lost on the set somewhere. And that's what Kellogg is going to have to find and put back in. 410 excellence, too good. There, did you ever hear better cards? It wasn't exciting, so they figured it must be art. Nobody's going to write down they don't like art. What are you, you thinking in terms of recutting? No. You and Wiley and Kellogg look at every foot you have. Decide what scenes you need to get the story back to where Wiley had it. Then shoot them. We can't do that. The sets are struck. The actors have outside dates. The retakes would cost us... I'll be happy if we get out for another million. A million? We have two in this already. Do you want to write that off? I want to release the picture. And these cards say... Of course. Four hundred people, mostly in for nothing, put down what they think they're supposed to. But they don't run my studio. Not yet, Pat. But they find out about this in York. Retakes. After those cards. Well, that'll be our secret. Yours and mine. Well, children. Your car will be here in a minute, Mr. Starr. Oh, I've got my glasses. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Ready, Mr. Starr. Monroe Starr's outer office was always crowded. Unless you were important, you had to wait a long time to see him. Sometimes you never saw him. The day after the preview was no exception. Kellogg will be back in the studio this morning. What island is he on, Catalina? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you could have sent me a memo about it. What's your problem? Uh, what do you suppose Lou Myrick wants with you? He wants to see me. He didn't say about what, but... Well, I'll know in five minutes. Yes, sir? Bertie, when Mr. Myrick shows up, send him right in, hmm? Yes, sir. He just came to the main gate. Oh, you know what he looks like? His picture was in the paper. And you know what it said underneath his picture? Studio shake-up looms. That you're afraid of the two magic words, New York. Well, they sent him out here for some the reason. Same reason they made him chairman of the board. Well, what does he know about pictures? Nothing. But he knows about tax spin-offs, mergers, liquidations, carrybacks. He's an operator. Yeah. And maybe his first operation is to fire you and me. If I can find somebody who can do my job better, I guess he will. I'm not worried. No. But what about... 
Tell you what. I'll tell them lies about you. You tell them the truth about me. That way we'll both keep it. Right, Mr. Myrick. Thanks, Bertie. Mr. Myrick, I'm Monroe Starr. Oh, and this is my assistant, Mr. Brady. Thanks, Louis. May I see you for a moment? Yes, of course. Right now, if you'd like. Won't you sit down? After lunch, okay with you, Pat? Lunch? Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Say lunch. Are you afraid of me? Is that your standard opening for this kind of interview? Anybody ever say yes? I asked you. No. I'm not afraid of you. Why? Should I be? I don't know yet. Mr. Myrick, my job is making pictures. I do the best I can. I'm egotistic enough to think that that's the best there is. The way I see it, the smarter my boss is, the more likely he is to see it. That is, if it's there to see. If it isn't, I don't want a job. I don't need the money. And I haven't got time to waste. I see. Mr. Starr, in New York, they say you spend a great deal of money. I get every dollar on the screen where the people can see it. When sales are down, it's good to cut costs. Sometimes economy proves economy very... Economy means a lot of different things out here, Mr. Myrick. Usually it means that somebody from New York is in town, so you fire 15 secretaries, you tell the rest to sharpen their pencils down to the stub, you kick the inter-office memo envelopes around. This office doesn't fire secretaries. We throw short pencils away. We use the envelopes only once. I take it you don't believe in economy, Mr. Oh, Starr. you're wrong. I economize by not making pictures. I don't think I'll make money. I save millions that way. But the ones you do make... I spend the money to make them right. Including retakes? News seems to travel faster every day out here. Yes, we do retakes when they're needed. Meaning? Meaning when I think they're needed. Mr. Starr. Yes? Excuse me, sir, but shall I send the people away? Some of them are getting nervous. No, just a moment. Look, I'm enjoying this, but we are on company's time. Maybe we could get together later on. No need for that. You go right ahead. Don't mind me. You want to sit in? Mr. Starr, your salary is $200,000 a year plus stock options. That's about $900 a day, $100 an hour. I'd like to see about uh, $50 worth. <laughs> Who's first, Bertie? Bosky, I guess. He's the maddest. Oh, this is an English novelist. He's been with us for ten weeks at 3,000 a week. He hasn't written a usable line yet. Naturally, he's sore at me. Mr. Starr, I've come to the conclusion. George, this is Mr. Myrick. Mr. Myrick, George Boxley. Go ahead, George. Mr. Myrick's on sort of a field trip. Frankly, Mr. Starr, it's those two hacks you've teamed me with. They seem to have a vocabulary of about 100 words. Each? Why don't you write it yourself? I have. I sent you some. It's just talk, George. Interesting talk, but talk. Talk? The men are dueling all through the conversation. At the end, one of them falls into a well and has to be hauled up in a bucket. <laughs> talk. Would you write that same scene into a novel? Of course not. Movie stand? Different. You go to the movies? Not often. Possibly because people are always dueling and falling into wells. Yes, and saying stupid, trite things. Well, your dialogue is much better than what those hacks write. But try to write stories without having people fall into wells. Is there a fireplace in your office? Uh-huh. You're in your office. Tired? Resting? Too many duels, maybe. A pretty stenographer comes in. She doesn't notice you watching her. She takes a newspaper from your desk crumples it up and throws it into the fireplace. Now she takes off a pair of black gloves and throws them in on top of the paper. She crosses to the telephone, dials a number, says, hello, listens, and then says, I never owned black gloves in my life. Now she kneels down by the fireplace and starts to light the fire. Suddenly you realize a man is standing just outside the door. His shadow is... Well, what happens? I don't know. I was just making pictures. It's just melodrama. Why? No violence, no cheap dialogue. <laughs> there was only one line of a writer like you. Why was she making a call? If she were trying to deny something, why wasn't she getting a call? 
I'll never understand this stuff. You're beginning to, George, or you wouldn't have asked that question. Now, send me some more pages whenever you want. Mr. Van Dyke is next. Thanks, sweetheart. Our press department is here. Did you hear about Buddy Griggs? I have a feeling I don't want to. 85 down Wilshire Boulevard. Car belongs to his ex-wife. She reports it stolen. He tries to duck a couple of cops by turning off into a parking lot. Beyond the Victor Hugo? Somebody put a building up there last year. You know, the charge sheet on him runs on to page two. The papers get it? Not yet. Too early. But the Herald and the News are after me. Send them the studio biography on them. Pictures, clips, the works. Well, that's making it easy for them. Sure. In return, you ask for one favor. In the stories, he's to be identified as a writer, not a producer. Oh, I don't see what good that'll do. Writer does that sort of thing. It only proves he has spirit. The producer bring discredit. Is there anything else? I got a list. The governor's coming out. Party Mr. of Gilligan six. Gilligan is next. Okay, Mr. Gilligan. not there, Monroe. It just plain is not there. Now, Irish, I'm not going to kid you. You know that this story was written for you. If you'll tell me what it is that's missing. Oh, look, Monroe, you know that I'm not one of these pretty boy phonies out here that goes around counting his lines. The broad part happens to be 30% larger than mine, but that's all right. That's fine. Huh? Oh, we could cut it down, give you more to do. Now, look, I don't care if you give me seven lines. That's, that's fine with me. But I got to know who I am. Look, Monroe, what I do has got to have a little flesh to it, some dimension. What about this guy? Does he sleep raw in his drawers? How is he with a dame, huh? Look, Monroe, for you, I'll play an animal. But I've got to know what animal it is that I'm playing. We'll make it bigger for you, Irish, as big as you want. Bigger round! Complete! Who is the guy? Where is he going? Where is he coming from? Please, Monroe, give me something in here that I can play off of. Send Mr. White in here right away. Yes, sir. A Mr. Zavras is out here. Nick Zavras? What is your first name? Nick. Yes, that's right. Send him in while we're waiting for Wiley. All right, here, Monroe, 13. Wiley, you understand, he'll fix it up for you, Irish. It's been a long time, Nick. <laughs> yes, pretty long. Mr. Myrick, this is Mr. Zavras. How do you do, sir? I won't embarrass him by telling you when he directed his first great picture. No, please don't. But he would embarrass me much more if he told you when I directed my last one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Remember, Monroe? With her. Yes, look. It's the only one I've saved. Monroe, I, I'm going home. Home? Greece? Well, I wish you'd told me. Well, I'm here now to say goodbye. No, I mean sooner I'd have gotten up a dinner for you. You can't just disappear. Oh, I did that long ago. No. Now I'm just making it official. We're going to miss you, Nick. I'll miss you, Monroe, and, and thank you for everything. Today. Hi, Nick. Hey, what'd you do to Zavris? He looked like he was crying. Passed right by me. The man never saw me. Is he drunk? Irish has some ideas on Corner River. Fix it up for him. Mr. Fix it up for him. They're going to rehearsal next week.
What is it? The old trouble? No. You, you know, I... I hadn't had a drop in years, but... You should know you paid for my cure, but... No one believes me. No one would take a chance on a... On a director who is a reformed drunk. I might have taken a chance if you'd asked me. Yes, I know that. But... I just couldn't get myself to do it because... Because I need the money, because... I want to buy what you have to sell. Yeah? Why should you do that? Oh, I'm famous for not giving jobs out of friendship. Well, don't just stand there. On the road, this... This is a terrible responsibility to... To save a man's life. You go and tell Pat Brady to put you on the payroll as of today. What's your money? I haven't worked in a while. When you worked? <laughs> Twenty-five hundred, but I'd worked for... Now, Nick, this is no time to ask for a raise. I'm not asking for a raise. Oh. N no, this is not good, Monroe. I I'm too old to be ashamed. I but you know, I, I was almost ready to... Forget it. I know when to quit on a man. Don't quit before I do. No. Monroe, if... If you want anybody's throat cut any time, day or night, just, just call on me. It, my number is still the same. <laughs> you know, I may take you up on it at that. <laughs> Now you go and see Pat Brady. Go on. Excuse me. Um, could you tell me where I would find Mr. Myrick, Mr. Lou Myrick? Yes, he's in there. He's in my office. In your office? Are you, uh... I'm Monroe Starr, miss. Miss Moore. Kathleen Moore. Is anything wrong? I'm sorry. You remind me of someone. Your wife? Everybody used to say that I looked like Mina Starr. Yes. I do hope that we will meet again. I'd be very sorry if we didn't. I can't play what I can't feel. I also can't see how the broad can go to him at the end of the play instead of me. Now, if you would just change Monroe, the... Monroe, this guy's talking about a complete rewrite. Oh, I'm talking about a very long section of a paragraph. Gentlemen. Mr. Gilligan, Mr. White. Miss Moore. Hi. Right. Right. Now, look, Hemingway, right over here. Won't you sit down? Team. It's a beautiful chance to get a close-up of me, you know, I understand me, get a... Uh, Wiley, I thought that as long as you were going to do the rewrite, that uh, said I was it do... might be a wonderful chance for your experiment. What experiment? You know, you uh, wanted to tell a story entirely in long shots. This might be the spot at that. No close-ups at all. A whole story told in terms of large movement. We'd be getting the benefit of the mobility of the medium. No, uh, no close-up? This doesn't concern you, Irish. I oh, think it might be a no, wonderful uh, no, experiment. Row, uh, uh, no close-ups. Would that be commercial? Give me the rest of the changes. No. No, on, uh, on second thought, Monroe, I think you were right. I think the script is fine just the way it is. Irish, I didn't say that. Well, I know, but I thought about it, Monroe, and I think you were right. Thanks for your time. <laughs> I'll see you after lunch. <laughs> Congratulations, Monroe. You've still got the touch. Bertie, are the dailies in yet? Robbie's waiting in room D for Denver. Would you like to watch me watch dailies? Well, that's very educational, too. Well, uh, that is, if Kathleen has nothing else to do. Yeah, it'd be very interesting. Well, it looks like it is, it is. Doesn't seem real. It's real, all right. 
takes no good at all. All you can see is the top of her head. That's better. But the room looks small. I thought we wanted it small. No, a small hotel room suggests cheapness. Have to make it a little larger. This is the uh, first time we've seen it. Is that a hair on the film? It's a projector. Mr. Myrick, telephone. May I take that call someplace else? Yes, you can take it in my office. Hey, Robbie, have the call transferred there. Is that your lamp? No, sir. That's on the film. Oh, that's very artistic. You can't see a thing. Hey! Mina used to do that. You must have loved her very much. Yes. What about you and Lou Myrick? We are friends. Are you going to marry him? I don't know. He hasn't asked me yet. It doesn't really matter. Doesn't it? Are you shocked? Because in the movies it always does match, is that it? What I feel right now, I'd cut out of any picture. Don't go too fast. I don't like things to go too fast. Okay, thank you, Ollie. You bet, Mr. Starr. How do you go slow? Let's start at the very beginning. May I call you Kathleen? Robbie, that stuff was terrible. We can save it, though. Start with a blow-up of the telegram, then a close-up of the delivery boy. Then a close-up of the girl. Don't use that low-key shot. We can afford lights. Then a close-up of the man. Put her dialogue over his shot. That whole scene shouldn't run more than 20 seconds. Right. Well, Monroe, are you going to the Gill Dance tonight? Publicity problem. No, I don't think... Unless you two would like to go. You should. The industry at play. Well, I have to go back to New York this afternoon, just for a couple of days, that phone call. But uh, maybe Kathleen, that is, unless you're taking someone else. Oh, well. Uh, did you get your $50 worth, Mr. Myrick? I remember Wiley and I were holding hands in the doorway. Wiley was staring at his boss with his usual mixture of jealousy and admiration. As for me, I was head over heels in love with Monroe Starr. And you can take what I say for what it's worth. you even more than I love your money, which is plenty. But Star could make me a producer much quicker than your father could. If you're going to sing for Star, get in a line about me being a born producer. Uh, not tonight. Some night when it's just Star and me. He'll look at me and say, I've never really seen her before. Oh, we don't use that line this year. Hmm. Then he'll say, little Cecilia. Suddenly he'll notice I've become a woman. So far, you haven't had a line. Stand there and bloom. After he kisses me, as one would a child... That's all in my script. He'll sit there with his head in his hands and say, I never really thought of you like that. <laughs> you mean you put a little extra into that kiss? Hmm? I bloom. I told you I bloom. <laughs> hey, how come you can drink and I can't? <laughs> You're sweet, why? Oh, sorry. His fault. Yes, of course. Go on. Well, I became the boy wonder. They gave me the keys to keep, and pretty soon I was the only one who knew which key was which. 
Even if they'd taken them away from me, no one would have known which locks they fitted. Mm. There's more to it than that. Are you convinced? I mean that a Hollywood dance is just a dance. Now, what does that mean? Am I ready to leave? Go for a drink, a ride? Or some place where we can be alone? I hadn't thought of it. It's a very hollow lie. But it's a good idea, isn't it? No. I don't breathe quite right when I'm with you. Which? The drink? The ride? One or the other? Both, maybe. There's nobody here. But I'm a closed door person. And I'd like to shut the world out. That can't be done in here. It's like living in a well. You can feel the earth turn, is that it? Is that why you didn't put any roof on it? Because you like that feeling? The house was for Minna when she died, I lost interest. Maybe I'll finish it now. Not for me. I love you. Do you believe that? But it doesn't make any difference? Yes. Yes, there are candles in here. How much time do the doctors give you? How much time, Monroe? I know the rest all except that. How long have you known? About a month. Lou, Mr. Myrick. You can call him Lou. He got the reports as fast as you did. How much time does he give me? I mean, maybe he has better information than I have. He doesn't know that. He asked you to find out from me? No. I don't know how much time I have. It's funny, in a, in a picture it's always a definite time. I made one once. A week to live, ten days to die, something like that. I remember when the man found out it made him wild. Made him want to try all the things he'd never had nerve enough to try before. Is it that way with you? Is that why I am here? How could it be? What do I know now that I haven't known all my life? About you, about me, everyone. But there's a difference. When every hour... Every second. Two billion people come two billion seconds closer to death. But knowing it, some things are important. Before I found out, I was going to quit at the studio. 
later I decided not to. Do you care about this? Yes. That you're going to marry Myrick? Lou? If he asked me to. But I care. You were right. There is more to it than just knowing which keys are which. When I was the boy wonder, I had strong young wings and I flew high. High enough to see things nobody else saw. The inevitable crash. Inevitable? Yes, I saw Pat Brady crash. You met him. He was never as high as I got, but it was an ugly crash. I decided it wasn't going to happen to me. I'd stay up as long as I wanted to. Then I'd come down on my own, slowly, gently. And I was going to remember everything that I'd seen. It doesn't sound easy. I never thought of it as easy. Later, when the doctor told me what he did, I decided I didn't have to come down. Now it was just a little while more. Couldn't you spend that time resting? Aren't you tired? I could still be brought down, of course. But not by Brady, because he's finished himself. By Lumari. Maybe. If he wants to, does he? I don't know. I don't think that he cares about you one way or the other. Does it bother you how I feel about him? How do you feel about him? He's been very kind. And I'm most grateful to him. Grateful enough to... Yes, it bothers me. I'm sorry. No, don't be. I love you. I'll love you as long as I live. If I promised to love you for a year, I'd be promising more than I... Don't. Oh, no, I'm not sorry. An old producer once told me that if you're after the perfect picture, you'll be doing retakes on Doomsday. I think it's that way with lives. If my life were a picture, I wouldn't do any retakes. I'm saying is I have no claim on you and I'm glad because anything you give me even if it's just tonight it can be a gift when you owe you can't give you can only pay it I can't see the color of your eyes now but they make me sorry for everyone in the world stop it let me look me in the mirror for weeks they aren't any color. They're just eyes to see with. I have nice teeth. You have beautiful teeth. Not as beautiful as all the girls out now here. Now you stop it. I meant every word I said. And I'm a cautious man. Let's go out on the beach. It's late. Very late. I didn't see Monroe Star for three days after the Gill dance. Not that I didn't want to. I just had the idea that, well, that it was the wrong time for me to make a move, any move. I still think I was right. How's that for you, Jack? Fine, Mr. Kellogg. Okay, printed. All right, that's the print, boys. Put your second team. All right, second team, man. Take that close. Oh, no, you can't come out of the screen, please. Okay, you want to get that closer, Mr. Kellogg? Good. All right, Jack. Are you satisfied with the retakes? Aren't you? No. They're not any better than what they were before. Well, I was satisfied with what I took before, Monroe. You but know I that. wasn't. I think I told you that. Well? You told me. Do you know what we're paying that Walters Dane? Counting the penalty for going past and her cutoff the date? The retakes weren't my $2, idea. You were the one who insisted... In the daily, she reminds me of Miss Foodstuffs. 
She is playing a teacher. She is playing a beautiful teacher. Well, she's got to look like a teacher. She's got to look like Barbara Walters. That's what the public is paying to see. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to shoot it the way I feel it. No. You don't have to shoot it at all. Nick. First please, please, for ready. You taking me off? Yes. Well, I'll, I'll go back and finish this scene. Mr. Zavros is going to do it. Sorry, Kellogg. <laughs> Nick Zavros, are you out of your mind? Hey, Nick, what are you doing? Mr. Zavros, Left my coat back there. I brought it along. Good luck, Charlie. Monroe, you might as well have one of these. They're all over town. I understand Lou Myrick's getting one in tomorrow morning's mail. Oh, and incidentally, would you please announce that you fired me? It'll help me with whoever takes over the studio. Oh, uh, good luck, Monroe. Perfectly hard for you to call your assistant in, but it's pretty late in the day to bother a writer. We have a union, you know. We'll start out by all of you reading this. You're certainly making it sound very mysterious. That, of course, is a photostat. I take it we all know what it's a photostat of. Why, sure, that's a score on the preview cards. I wrote it out for you. And you threw it in the theater manager's wastebasket. Yes, and somebody fished it out and had copies made. But why? Well, why is pretty obvious. Somebody wants it generally known that I'm spending a million dollars the property of the usual widows and orphans for retakes on a picture that the preview audience was delighted with. Who is a little more difficult? Fortunately, we four are the only ones who knew what was on that paper. Let me state for the record that it wasn't me. Monroe, I never saw that paper after I gave it to you. I give him my word. Scout's honor. I was an Eagle Scout. Also in my honor as a member of the Guild, the Beverly Hills Democratic Club, and the Bruin Bench. How can you be sure? Maybe you were drunk, too drunk to remember. I haven't been drunk. Since when? Since last... Eight months and three days. She's keeping score. She promised to marry me. To answer you. I proposed and she promised an answer. If I stayed sober for two years, not counting Christmas week. You had a couple the night of the preview? One. I remember everything that happened. I even remember who it was that went back at... I won't need you anymore, Wiley. You can go, too. You've got to believe me. No, I don't have to at all. You've been out to get me ever since I talked the board into keeping you on as my assistant. Ever since you... What? Of course I did. When I was a boy, I had a sign on my flivver. Don't laugh, you may be old yourself someday. They only gave you control when you agreed to keep me on. That's the story they gave out. If you believed it, you were the only one. That's a lie. That's your big talent. Lying and making people believe you. The funny thing is you, working so hard and so long to get me out. And all the time I was your meal ticket. I did all right before you got here, and I'll be doing all right long after you you're test gone. It tomorrow morning. See if you can get through the front gate of this studio. You don't scare me. Why? Because all you have to do is take your paper to Mr. Myrick, and I'll be out on the street. Is that the idea? Believe me, there's nothing personal about this, Monroe. The good of the studio Shut is the only that. thing that... Have you thought how you go about proving what's on this paper? Just some figures that you might have written. Oh, no. This is one lie too many. Oh, no, that's in Wiley's handwriting. You'll never get my... You'll never fool Myrick about that. But I'm going to try, Pat. And if I come through this in one piece, and I intend to, I'm going to make this lot Brady-proof. Not just while I'm here, but afterwards, too. A hundred years after I'm dead, they'll still have your picture hung out by the gate with a little tag on it. Barred from the lot. You're fired, Pat. Get out of here. You cheap con. All the way out.
Sutton is from me. Oh? You change your mind after you sent it? You can get them back from the office, you know, until they're delivered? No, you didn't know, or no, you didn't change your mind. Monroe, I had something to tell you. And I thought that I could tell it to you this way. Well, then I found out that I couldn't. Go ahead, Monroe, open it. It isn't the same thing reading it while I'm here. Lou Myrick? Yes. You're going to get married in Santa Barbara. I made Lou stop and he let me come up here. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. No. And sentimental. I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Goodbye, Monroe. Goodbye. I won't see you again. I know. You'll hear from me, though. And don't worry, I won't make a nuisance of myself. You go to the movies? Yes, now and then. Maybe you'll see pictures I make. You'll wonder if there's anything in there that's just for you. Will that be? Oh, it doesn't matter. Seeing it that way, you'll see the picture differently. The difference will be hearing from me. You don't really need me, Monroe. Hmm? Well, who looks like Mina? You know that, don't you? Don't keep him waiting. Goodbye, Kathleen. doing here? Come on in. You don't have to tell me. No, it's it's all right. She, uh, she came to say goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry. I came to tell you about my father. I know quite a bit about he him. He told me it was my duty to tell the truth about the preview cards, if anybody asked me. And he gave me the impression that somebody would. You'll have to see what your duty is for yourself. Oh, I told him that. But he put it on a personal basis, father to daughter. Only... Only I don't like him much. That shocks you, doesn't it? Because you're supposed to honor your father. All right, I honor him. I just don't like him. What did you tell him? But I was sorry, but I wouldn't back him up no matter what, so he'd better not have anybody ask me. Little Cecilia. What was that? Oh, I just said, little Cecilia. I lied when I said I was sorry, but Kathleen Moore said goodbye. If I was unselfish, I would be, but I'm not. Also, I'm jealous. I'm very grateful to you, Cecilia. Well, I guess that's something, anyway. You'd better go on home now. Little girl? Hmm? You left out little girl. You'd better go on home now, little girl. I didn't mean it to sound like that. Neither did I. And you're right. I'd better go home. We'll take my car. Then I'll go back to my house.
Well, there's no reason for you to drive home alone. None at all. You live at your father's? No, I live at a residence house. Girls only. Darn it. My car rusted in Monroe Star's driveway for a week, and it didn't mean a thing. Not that I didn't try. We used to have dinner, Monroe and I. I was getting so I could call him Monroe quite easily by then, at a place where they had trained seals, no less. Afterwards, we'd go out to the beach house and look at the ocean and talk. The talk always started with seals, but it could end up anywhere. Pictures, politics, religion, why the palm trees in Beverly Hills didn't have dates or coconuts on them, and what this means, which was plenty, believe me. Around 11.30, he'd say, it's almost 12, and take me home and go on to his real house, which was in Bel Air. And then, a week later, there was real trouble. It didn't have anything to do with the two of us, though. Not, as I say, for any lack of trying on my part. Oh, all right. Um, no, 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 Mr. Stupid, Mr. Stewart, his average didn't show, and his character's going crazy. I want you to get all of these people out of here right now, all except Nick's assistants. And I want you to make sure that everything is ready to go on the Zabra set right away. All right, folks, you heard it. Scram, stage five and a half hour. Let's go to shoot. Get out. Yeah, get out. There's nothing but a liar. Nothing but big. Dirty, stinking lice, that's Shut all. Shut up, Nick. Do you want me to get it? The razor blade, do you want it back? Maybe you think I should use it on myself. Listen, Mundro. All right, I'm listening. Last night when I... When I left the studio, he stopped me. Pat Brady. He stopped me and... Uh, he showed me the... I know he wasn't too... Uh, I know he was making it up. But... Making what up? But then he... Then he showed me all these... Uh, medical reports, you know, and... They were so accurate and so precise. He couldn't have made those up, could he? I'm beginning to understand. No, you don't understand. I couldn't understand. I... I kept saying to myself, no, it, it can't be true. It, it just isn't true, but it didn't help. You use any excuse to get drunk, don't no, you, Nick? No, 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 I... I had to forget. So I only know one way how to forget. Now you understand? Oh, yes. Yes, now I understand. Only you left out one thing, Nick. You left out how everybody failed you, everybody you'd ever known. And now I was failing you, too. No jokes, Monroe. It's no joke, Nick. Do you know what it means when a man's friends fail him all the time? Tell me, what does it mean? It means he doesn't have any guts. Nick, I didn't fail you. You quit on me. No. You know something? I'm beginning to believe everything they used to say about you. The biggest lush in the whole industry. All right. Oh, incidentally, Brady didn't tell you, did he, that I'm in a little bit of trouble with this picture right now. Suspend shooting while I find another director. Director number three, that Monroe, means... Monroe, stop. But don't you worry, Nick. Mon because Brady will always give you another job. Monroe, you... You don't need another director. I need one who can walk. All right. I need one who can stand up. Give me a couple of days. No, we're paying penalties to half our cast right now. Give me one day. No. <laughs> All right. I'll show you. <coughs> oh. 
I'll show you. I don't know. I can walk. I know. I know I can walk. Stay away from me. Stay away from me, you hear? Tell me, it's true, isn't it, what Brady said? Yes, it's true. And, uh... How long have you got? I don't know, but I'm not supposed to start any continued stories. All right, Nick, sit down. You've proved your point. Sit down. I'll go out and try to find another director. No, you won't. I told you. You don't need another. I'll show you. Hey. See you, Monroe? I can walk. It takes more than walking. I can walk without holding on. <laughs> I'm walking. Come on the road. This is my picture. It's my picture, you hear? You're not going to take it away from me. Only... Only I wish you wouldn't have to die. Berserk. What? I need you. Buddy, if you got to help me, I just don't want to lose a minute. Don't you worry, we'll get those. We've pictures. got to make make up for time. Yes, sir? Bertie, I'm going down to the beach. I'll be at my house later on. But I don't want any telephone calls. Yes, sir. Only... What? Oh, nothing. I forgot. It's an old note. You've already taken care of it. What is it? Myrick? Yes, he just got back this afternoon. He's very anxious to see you. Couldn't I set something up for tomorrow morning? No. Call him now and... Ask him to come down. Yes, sir. And Bertie? Yes, Mr. Starr. Thank you. You know, I can never remember whether it's the groom who gets congratulated and the bride who gets the best wishes or the other way around. Anyway, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I take it you've seen one of these. Yes. I hear they're giving them away as cereal premiums in cereal boxes now. Mr. Starr, the corporation's annual meeting will be held next week. I'm sure you realize if this document is authentic, it raises the serious question as to your suitability for the position you now hold. No, I don't realize anything of the kind. Oh, you deny that the document is authentic? I do not. It's a photostat of a tabulation of the preview cards. I have the cards here in my desk if you'd care to check. That won't be necessary. You ignored these cards. I think I told you once I always ignore them. Always? Well, sometimes people tell us things. One preview, we got two cards objecting to the leading man's sloppiness and indelicacy. They said his shirt tail was hanging out. We fixed it up. 
Let's not play games, Mr. Starr. I'm talking about the top of this card. The place where the people give you their opinions. That doesn't affect your judgment? It can't. Release a picture, hold it up, recut it, reshoot it, junk it. These are decisions I get paid for. If the people who make out these cards knew better than I do, they'd have my job. All right. You've told me what you do not base your decision on, and I think I understand. Now, do you think you could possibly communicate to me what you do base your decision on? I'll try. I realize it's very difficult to explain these matters to someone with no motion picture background. However, I am considered the quick learner type. I didn't like the picture. I didn't think audiences would like it. Why not? Call it instinct. Oh, come on. You mean I wouldn't understand? Admit it. I have a very thick hide. I've given you my reason. I don't understand. I'm being very frank with you, Mr. Myrick. An executive is paid to make right decisions. Correct. Based on what? Based on instinct. Look. Say you're a... You're a railroad man and you have to lay tracks through a pass. You get your surveyor's reports and you see six possible routes and not one seemingly any better than the others, but you've got to choose one way. You can't test the best way except by doing it. So you choose one way. Maybe because that mountain's pink or and the blueprints are better blue. But you make up your mind so quickly and so firmly that everybody figures you must have a reason. In other words, you bluff. I want a picture released because I want it released. I don't because I don't. Call it bluffing if you like. I'm not always right. What makes this picture so special to you? Who said it was? Well, you spent a million dollars. I did what had to be done. What you thought had to be done. Yes, of course. If I can't do that, I don't want any part of the whole thing. Yes, but deciding what has to be done, it must be more than just instinct. Something made you order those retakes. My rump. Your what? When I see a picture and my rump aches, that picture needs cutting. When it aches real bad, it needs more than cutting. I could hardly sit still that night. Are there any more questions? Should I start cleaning out my desk in the morning? Mr. Starr, the question of your future employment will be decided by the board. I will report to them that you spent a million dollars on retakes for a picture that had the greatest audience reaction ever given and at a preview. I will tell them that your reason was simply because. Not because of this or because of that, but just because. Seems like a lot of bother to go to. You can have my resignation right now. Please be quiet. I haven't quite finished. I will advise the board that they have the right to terminate your contract. I will also advise them that if they exercise that right, that is, if they fire you, or if they try to diminish your authority in any way, I will resign as chairman of the board. Why? Because that blueprint is a little better blue. I made up that story. The board will vote unanimously to continue you in office. I think our company is most fortunate to have in its employ an executive with a public rump. Someday you must tell me how you make your decisions. Cecilia, would you like to take a ride down to the beach? We can pick up some hamburgers along the way. Yes, we'll take my car. You can bring yours back later on. Well, try to explain it to him. I, I think Wiley will understand. mean relish that's mine oh 
I don't remember any grass here before. Oh, it's not real. You no, know, I had the studio put it down. I was thinking of having a picnic down here. Oh, where did they get it from? Where do you think? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. Oh, no, we keep lots of fake grass at the studio, enough to make a football field, I guess. Mm. But it is the same stuff that they use in the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Why, does that bother you? Well, it does seem sort of gruesome. Oh. Well, here. I have a potato chip. <laughs> <laughs> I love a potato chip. because I lost my heart to you. Yesterday, I'd have thought you were saying that to me. Tonight, I know it's just the words to a song. Guess I've grown up. It happens. You know, if you wanted me to go home right now, I could go. And you wouldn't have to take me. I could go alone. Because it's over. It was over when Nick Savers went back on the picture, I think. Aren't you curious to know why? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. The only reason I didn't ask was because I was sure you were going to tell me anyway. And I would have. My love for you. And it was real, Monroe. Terribly real, not schoolgirl stuff at all. It's all gone now. This is beginning to sound like a song. I don't know exactly why it's gone, but... I know you're going to have a good picture, and I think that has something to do with it. Oh. Well, what if the picture flops? What'll that prove? Will you fall in love with me all over again? That'll prove that a good picture can flop. And I won't fall in love with you. Not ever again. I can be with you and sing songs and look at the ocean and it's all fun it would be fun if you kissed me right now mm, I was right it was fun look Wiley understands about us doesn't he he knows that oh there's nothing to know that's what I mean you know He's not a bad guy for a writer. <laughs> Thanks. And what's the matter with being a writer? A writer is a man who rents out his brains. Is that any worse than being a man who hires other people's brains? Yes. Well, I'll explain it to you someday. Are you in love with him? I think so. Yes, yes, I am. You're going to marry him? When I'm ready to. <laughs> when you're darn well good and ready. <laughs> I'll accept that. Does he know? Oh, I think so. Look, do you think it's too late now to go and tell him? And then he'll really know. <laughs> That's the sweetest brush off I ever got. And quite unnecessary. I'll see you in the road. How long has it been there? A week? Another week and Luella would have had us married. 
What's wrong, Monroe? Oh, I just have a terrible headache. I'm tired. I think it's this riot is Hollywood living. Good night. Next week, Playhouse 90 will present a very special event. The television debut of one of the great actresses of our time, Academy Award winner Shirley Booth. And next week's play is another event, The Hostess with the Mostess, the true life story of Pearl Mester. Perhaps you remember Irving Burling's song, The Hostess with the Mostess. As the hostess or with the mostess on the ball. It was from that wonderful stage hit, Call Me Madam, in which Ethel Merman as Pearl Mester serenaded Broadway for several seasons. Next week, however, it's a different Pearl Mester whom you'll meet, a woman whose picture appeared on the cover of Time magazine with the caption, The Right Men Come to Dinner. Yes, she'll still be giving dazzling parties with guest lists that include presidents, ambassadors, and kings. But you'll see the true story of how she began her career as the world's most fabulous hostess. Next week, the story of a fascinating woman, a woman who, through courage and determination, has become one of the most famous women in the world. to you tonight by Royal Portable Typewriters, products of the Royal McBee Corporation, the world's largest manufacturer of typewriters. And by Marlboro Cigarettes. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, flip-top box. Dick Joy speaking, portions of the preceding program pre-recorded. Play